There's not one guy, one person in the history of this program that's bigger than the program. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. Commitments, big commitment uh, big. that just dropped on Monday afternoon, big. Monday evening. Cortez Mills, four-star wide receiver, 6'2", 180 from Homestead, Florida. Picked OU over Nebraska, LSU, uh, and Miami? one other. Uh, was it Miami? I, I can't remember. I think Clemson and Miami were both. In Thank there. you. Okay. Oh, Florida. Um, I'm Clemson saying Florida, Florida not. Yeah, I'm saying Florida, Miami. not Miami. Gotcha. Yeah. He's a 2025 commit. He's the highest ranked commit of the class. I saw him as high as the 69th or 65th player in the country nationally. Yeah, uh, nationally. Um, so that's that's amazing. A good feather in the hat again, man. Emma Jones is working really hard and uh i'm i continue to be impressed with his abilities mark i mean what is this number five on mm -hmm. the class yeah. because it was number four when we added manny choice the other day mm -hmm. when we were recording I, yeah. it's nuts you almost you look at it and you think like man i wonder if we even have room for all of these guys but you know that they've hashed it out if he's offering these guys or these these I mean, they're high-level players. Cortez Mills comes in as the number one player in the class, according to some recruiting sites, and he wasn't even on the board. Marcus Harris posted today, we got him, as if he was heavily involved in his recruitment. Marcus Harris only committed, you know, several weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. It really has sped up along the way, and I'm fascinated to see what the momentum means for Emmett Jones moving forward because that there has to be an end point on looking at receivers for this class. And so then where do you go? Do you start focusing on the future at receiver, or do you use some of that just recruiting magic and get them in the room with other guys from the DFW area, even if they're not necessarily receivers, get him with some DBs the way we've done the reverse with J I before get him with some receivers before. I think it's suddenly you've done so well here. You can afford to allocate that resource in maybe a, a unique, different little way. What do you think, Pat? Do you think it, I mean, I'm just going to ask this question. Do you think it feels almost too early for all of these guys to already commit when we might not have, maybe the two, three guys Emmett Jones really wants that might be ranked higher. The five star. I, think the, or... I would think the fact that we're seeing these guys comfortable with, with Tate like committing and OU taking them at this point means he probably thinks we're out of the woods with some of the five stars. Like it's probably not going to happen yeah. with some of those more highly ranked players. Do you guys disagree? Uh, Matt Mason, any thoughts on that? No, I was uh I was trying to get the rankings, the updated rankings in front of me for national uh, recruiting classes. According to on three OU after the Cortez Mills commitment ninth in the country, uh two four seven has them at fifth. So uh that's something to think about. Also, Cortez Mills, according to on three, the hundred ninth ranked player nationally, uh fifteenth ranked player as a wide receiver in the country and according to 247 he's 196th nationally 21st in his at his position 25th and in the state level so uh you know top 200 player no matter how yeah, you cut it i and i'm not yeah there's nothing to shake your head out at, at that at all that's a that's a great player that's a great get for emma jones and company and this class continues to stack up i i think like last year's or 2024's class, according to on three, was like a 92 rating, however you want to determine that. But this year's class is already at a 90. And you still have some time to go before you get to December. So just continue to show that. And this is something I want to touch on when we when we get into the SEC talk, uh, that that OU continues and can't continue to recruit at a very, very high level, no matter where they're at. This kid's from Florida, man. In the heart of SEC country, and you rip him out of there, yeah, and and he's yours. That that's one massive. Thing, yeah, Mark. One thing I want to point out: so we've got five wide receivers, right? We've we've now, you know, we established that earlier. I think it's interesting to look at sort of the sizes and how you can stack these receivers up against each other. For example, 
Grayson Harris, the first of those receivers to commit to Emmett Jones. He'd been recruited by him before, right? Uh, he's 5'10", 170. He's a speedster. What he does is be fast. The three non... I mean, Manny Choice is 6'4", right? He's the big guy yeah. in the class. The remaining three guys are all 6'1", 6'1", 6'5", 183, 170, 185. That's Elijah Thomas, Cortez Mills, and Marcus Harris in order. Those guys are your move around all over the field guys. The other two are unique positional kind of stuff. And I think that that's an interesting way to look at it because suddenly it's not, man, we got five guys. How do you find snaps for them? It's, well, we have roles and we're going to fill yeah. those roles. Yeah. yeah. Matt, anything to add before we move on? Yeah, I'm just looking at the timeline. Just a few weeks back, June t or on May 31st, sorry, end of May, Cortez Mills took a visit to Clemson, and then there was two crystal balls dropped by two different people on June 10th and June 12th that they were predicting he was going to go to Clemson. Guess where he goes two days later? He arrives Norman, in Norman, Oklahoma. Wow. And even a week later, he went to LSU, and then the crystal ball started to flip to uh, from Clemson to OU. So I don't know what these guys are doing, especially Emmett Jones. Man, Emmett Jones is on fire. Based on what he's getting currently, his salary, he's going to have to get bumped up or he's going to get picked off by somebody because he's only making a hundred grand more than he was at Texas Tech. He's making about five fifty per year. Someone's earned himself a pretty nice raise if he can get all these guys and continue to recruit at a high level. I don't know what more you want from Emmett Jones at this point because, again, we can only have so many receivers on the field. Knowing the transfer portal, I think it's always a get better to get more people in the room because people will definitely flip or go somewhere else, whatever it might be. But, man, this guy is definitely a bargain and probably the best hire I, maybe not the but one of the better hires for this coaching staff. I mean, he just continues to prove his worth. Uh, and man, once he gets these guys in the room, I mean, I'm just looking at Cortel, Cortel Miz's stats for his junior year. Cortez Mills. And looking at it, he had 79 catches, 1,600 yards, and eight touchdowns. It's about 20 yards a catch. Man, this guy's got a unique set of skills. Love watching his highlights. Can do a little bit of everything inside out. I mean, this is another guy to add to this already stacked wide receiver class. Emma Jones, man, he's got he's earned himself a good raise heading into the SEC, that's for sure. For sure. Some other uh, commitments to get to. Darius Afalaiva, I want to say, uh, is how you pronounce that last name. He's an interior offensive lineman. Three-star 2025, 6'5", 320 from Sky Ridge High School in Lehigh, Utah. Sean Hutton, another interior offensive lineman, 6'3", 315. Uh, 2025 class Louisville, Texas, uh, probably a preferred walk on, I believe, uh, is what yep, is deciphered is. from that. Yeah. So, uh, those, those are two guys to watch for. I really, even though he's a preferred walk on 63315, love the size from Sean Hutton, and you like the size from Afaleva as well. You know, 65320 as a high school about to be senior. That's amazing. That's again, dude, we talk about it, we've talked about it for almost two and a half years on this podcast now i the size factor of going into the sec you have to recruit big body guys you cannot count on development anymore you just can't you have to have big guys from the jump in like you can't sign a a 285 offensive lineman and hope to hope to put you know 30 pounds on him he's got to be big like asap Good point. Yeah, we've got a couple guys, you know, a Logan Howland came in small, right? But mm -hmm. that's that's on the bottom end of your recruiting class, talent-wise, right? When you look at the stars, that's on the lower end. This is what you want to see. Darius, I'm gonna go off a of lava because that just sounds that sounds probably fun to me. more correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. number no. one player in the state of Utah, according to rivals.com. We just go into Utah and steal an interior lineman worth worth a good bit there. I think that that is a money move out of Bill Biedenbaugh. And like you said, he comes with size. He's built in size. We don't have to worry about developing that. We can refine the shape that he's in. I think that that's a better position to be in 
with a guy like this. Sean Hutton, yeah, he's a PWO, but he had offers to smaller schools. He didn't, he did like he doesn't quite cross the bar to get an offer from a place like Oklahoma, but he's one he we are lucky that the NIL system is such that we could throw him basically a scholarship because there's a world where if we're not just bringing in a new center after Branson Hickman's done in two years, he's the guy starting at center. There's a real possibility of that just because he's got the youth thing on uh, some of the other guys that are playing the position now. Matt Pat. This is the type of guy you guys, I mean, you want. I mean, you don't really have to put a lot more weight on him being 320 and just reading a lot of the recruiting analysts. I mean, he's already got the kind of NFL prototypical size that you want and the ability to <clears throat> have the agility and athleticism to get out onto the first, not only just the first, but also the second levels on those linebackers. I mean, this is the type of guy that you want and has humongous upside, I believe, for Bill B to work and mold. But having a guy this big, I can't even imagine trying to get past him, especially once he gets his hands on you. So this is a great get from the state of Utah, where he had plenty of other op offers in the region, Washington, Utah, Michigan State, UCLA, BYU, all those teams going for this guy. It's definitely a guy that you want on your roster to be able to work on that line. Pat? NFL pedigree, too. His dad's former NFL player. There you go. Pat? Off the lavas. But yeah, this is exactly what you want to see. We're going to have to win the battle in the trenches week in, week out. So these guys coming in at 6'5", 6 6'3", 6 over, over 350 pounds already, 315 pounds already. Love to see it. Excited. Perfection. Let us know down below in the comments what you think of uh, OU's new commitments for the 2025 class. There's not one guy, one person in the history of this program that's bigger than the program. What's better than this? Guys being dudes.